The sport of rowing is a healthy and accessible activity. Rowers start as early as middle school and continue well into their golden years. The sport is growing in every segment of the rowing community, with high school, collegiate, and adaptive athletes helping double the number of rowing programs in the past 15 years. This information is designed for beginner coaches and athletes. There are all kinds of rowing boats. Some are designed for racing only, while others are more durable, easier to handle, and are used for recreational purposes. Generally, the racing boats are divided into two categories, sweep, where each athlete rows with one oar, and sculling, where the athletes row with two oars. Every coach and athlete should possess a strong image, a mental model, of the rowing stroke. Coaches should know exactly what to teach and athletes should know exactly what they are trying to learn. We will talk about the basic rowing technique without going into specific details. Even experienced coaches find this simple approach very helpful in resolving technical problems with their athletes. Correct body posture provides a solid connection between the different groups of muscles during the drive. It creates efficient power application and prevents injury. Athletes should sit tall and relaxed without hunching the back. The rower should keep this strong, tall, and erect position during the whole stroke. The rowing motion is a cyclical motion. It has two phases. The recovery phase is when the blades are out of the water and the athletes are sliding forward towards the catch. The catch, putting the blade into the water, is the very last part of the recovery. The drive phase is when the blade is in the water and the athlete applies the power to move the boat. The athlete sits in the finished position, relaxed with knees down. The blades are out of the water. The hands start moving away from the body to almost full arm extension. The arms are extended and stretched. The rower pivots the body forward to the full reach position. The hands pass the knees, the knees are still down. Now the athlete is ready to start her motion slide forward towards the catch. This position is extremely important. The lack of proper body position at this stage can create many technical problems later on. The rower continues gliding forward to the catch without any change to his or her body position. Avoid additional reaching out slash stretching forward at the end of the slide. The rower arrives at the top of the slide with the body angle exactly as it was during the last part of the slide. The shins are almost vertical in the full compression position. The arms are relaxed and extended forward. The arms and the hands move upwards in a small motion, putting the blade into the water. The drive phase starts once the blade is in the water. It is defined by the sequence of the actions of the legs, body, and the arms. With the blade in the water, the legs push against the footboards and the rower moves towards the bow. The arms are stretched, the rower hangs on the oar handle. The body position remains unchanged for the first part of the drive. In this position, the seat is approaching the last third of the slide. The back uncoils so it appears as if the body swing takes over from the leg drive. The arms are still stretched. The oars are approaching a position perpendicular to the boat, mechanically the most efficient part of the stroke. In the last part of the drive, the legs are flat but still with some pressure against the footboards. 
The body sits in the layback position about 10 degrees past vertical. The arms continue the last inches of the drive. The rower continues to keep pressure on the footboards. At the release, the rower sits tall behind the oar handle. The hands make a semicircular motion without touching the body. The blade comes out of the water, ending the cycle. When you put it all together, it should look something like this. From the outside, the parts of the boat are the hull, the bow and stern, the gunnels, the riggers, and the fin slash rudder. The riggers are made of aluminum or carbon fiber and are attached to the gunnels. The pin holds the oar lock and is attached to the rigger. The back stays attached to the top of the pin and to the gunnel. The oar lock and gate closes to keep the oar in the lock. Inside of the boat we have the seat which moves up and down on the tracks. The footboard with shoes attached to a bar into the boat. The footboards can be moved forwards or backwards. The shoes have strings commonly called heel ties for quick release of the feet in case of an accident. The footplate is the place where the athlete places his or her foot as they sit down into the boat. There are also the caps, which seal the compartments. The inside of the sculling boat is similar to the sweep boat, except the riggers, which are symmetrical to accommodate one oar on each side. The boat should be checked regularly. The top nuts on the pin get loose often. Check the rigger's bolts, especially if the athletes put them on. Check the bow ball to see if it is attached correctly. And check the heel ties and seals of the compartments. The sweep oars are longer and have bigger blades than sculling oars. Sculling oars always have rubber grips on the end. In the past, sweep oars only had wooden handles. Today, sweep oars can have wooden handles or a variety of synthetic grips. The sleeves are made of plastic to allow the blade to rotate in the oar lock. The button, often called a collar, is made of hard plastic and prevents the oar from sliding through the oar lock. The collar is adjustable and can be moved up and down. The shafts of the oar are made of carbon fiber and come in varying levels of stiffness. In the past, they were only made of wood. Blades come in different sizes and shapes, but the most popular shape is the hatchet, and it's been used since the early 90s. We start by taking the blades out to the dock, with the blades in front of us. These pictures are from a large novice camp. There are so many blades on the rack, it's a miracle how they recognize which blades go with which boat. Remember to keep the oar handles and sleeves out of the dirt and sand. Taking a boat off of the rack and out of the boathouse needs special attention. Let's listen to an example of how a coxswain would call a boat out of the boathouse. All right, lay hold. Up off racks, ready up, bring it out. Don't let it slide, girls, not too high, not too low. Keep it up. And right up, every other go under or around. On your shoulders. Lock those elbows, toes to the edge. Rock As the athletes roll the boat and put it in the water, be careful of the fin. Remember to open the oar locks and put the blades in, and then close the gates. All right, extend water side. Slide the water side blades out. One foot in. Put one foot in. And in. And sit down on the seat.
Once we are in the boat, the first adjustment is the proper positioning of the footboards. The correct footboard position allows the athlete to be comfortable and row properly. Coach Eric Catalano explains how to do it. I want you to take your outside hand and pull it by you so that this part of your wrist is touching your body, but your elbow is peeking out behind. When you set your foot stretchers, you're going to set them so your hand is there so that the inside part of your wrist is touching your body. Now if I go forward, I'm going to move my foot stretchers back, right? And if it's in here, look, if it's in here, I got to move them forward. Okay, you don't need to lay back quite so far. Just sit up a little. There you go. And see how you're not quite touching here? We're going to move, you, move your feet forward just a little bit, okay? And then to move the feet forward, yeah, loosen everything right up. And a lift, lift, and slide, and then click it down in there. Good, that's better. Is your, is your thumb just touching over here? Yeah. Good. Good. Nice job. The height of the oarlocks above the seat is also an important factor in teaching athletes how to row, especially when the boats are shared by different groups. Here is a picture of the correct height. It allows the forearm of the rower to be horizontal at the finish, which, in effect, facilitates horizontal pull of the oar handle from the catch to the finish. This drawing illustrates a case of the same height for different sized athletes. We notice that this height is too high for the smaller athletes represented by figure A, too low for the athletes represented by figure B, but is correct for the athlete C. It is very important to learn correct grip from the beginning. Incorrect grip causes many mistakes and it is difficult to change later on. Spend plenty of time teaching the grip. One, two, three, Back to the end. Okay, now look down at your look down at your shoulders and look down at your hands. You guys know the uh, difference between a rectangle and a trapezoid? If it's a trapezoid, you can slide it a little bit further down to make it a rectangle. What I like to see right here, see how her, this is parallel to the water, so she's pulled through? You can relax here. Now she's going to push down and she's going to drop that wrist about 45 degrees. Push down. Good. And she just relaxed and it fell into position. You heard it click. Bit of a bend here, so that's going to help you feather. So you're going to push down and then drop. As you turn, did you feel it? Did you feel it drop in place? Mm -hmm. Let's do like just a few of those. Push down and feather. Keep a, keep a little weight so when you feather it stays up off the water. One more time. And when she goes to square up, we're gonna normally we would start squaring up as you know as we go, but we're gonna square up here because I'm gonna show you uh, the mistake that people make, and then I'm gonna show you the proper way. Now watch. The mistake is if you think I'm gonna square up, so I flip my hand down. If she flips her hand down, the blade goes up. Watch the blade. She flips her hand down, the blade goes up. What she wants to do instead. She's going to take these fingers and just turn around, just turn the fingers around the handle so that she's going to raise this wrist up. Not, not sorry, not, all, not up. It's going to go from down up to neutral. When the wrist comes, no, not quite that high. When the wrist goes from the down position up to the neutral position, the bottom of the blade goes to the water. What you want to do is make the bottom of the blade drop to the water. So you roll the wrist from the down up to the neutral position, like you're sending these knuckles around. So you go. Flatten out just a little bit, right there. Well, watch the, watch the blade. 
When the wrist comes up to the neutral, the blade goes down to the water. Okay, I'm gonna let you do that now. Good. Try and do it without, without moving this one. Good, now you're feeling it. Good. Correct posture makes the rowing stroke more efficient and it prevents injury. The ERG is a very useful tool to work on posture. Correct body posture provides a solid connection between the different groups of the muscles during the drive. It makes efficient power application and prevents injury. At the catch, the athlete should be sitting tall and relaxed, leaning forward from the hips without hunching the back. The athlete should keep this strong, tall position during the whole stroke. Using the erg with novice athletes before they go on the water is a good way to reinforce the correct posture of sitting up with the straight back and the chest up. Here is the difference with young athletes on sitting tall versus slouching. Notice when they sit tall, they use their abs to support their lower back to have good posture. The girls sit tall at the finish and row using only the arms. The motion is short, but should be done smoothly. To take the blade out of the water, the hands go down in front of the body without touching it. Now we add the back. The girls keep the same hand motion with the addition of the backswing. They pivot their upper bodies forward and backwards from the hips. We start adding the slide once coordination between the swing and the arms has been established. In the beginning, we use only quarter slide. Then we can move on to half slide. and then eventually to full slide. After the novice year, the final product should look like this. Sculling boats are usually smaller, lighter, and more fragile than sweep boats and there is no coxswain to guide the athletes. The athletes have to be very careful when taking the boats off the rack and carrying them to the water. In the beginning, it is advisable to use two people to carry a single. Put the inside blade from the dock in first, then the outside blade. Then put one foot in and sit down on the seat. Now it is time to adjust the footboard position. This looks like a correct footboard position. The legs are down and the distance between the hands is about six inches. Let's listen to Eric explain the sculling grip. See, see how my wrist is in line with the knuckles? And my punching knuckles are down, are facing down like this, so I can punch the person in front of me. I'm not going to. And then when I go to feather, that you can put a little bit of a valley in the wrist, just a little bit, and then just relax the hands. Now this set of knuckles is down. Squared. Feathered. Squared. Feathered. See where the thumb is as well? That's nice because it can give you a little bit of pressure out into the oar lock. So in order for me to feather, I do the little bit of a valley and then relax and let the blade drop in. Can you hear it click? You guys are going to try this in a second. And now this is Chris Chase. Let's listen to him explain squaring the blade into the catch. All right, now when you feather, you're going to roll the fingers out and the wrist down. 
And then as you come forward into the catch, you're going to roll the wrist right up into the catch. Into the catch. So you want it, you want to make it nice. Okay. So we're, we're really focusing on rolling up instead of rolling the knuckles down and then lifting. We're just rolling up. Okay, so why don't you do that once or twice? All right, we'll take two strokes. Take two more strokes. Make sure your left is in front and on top of your right. All standard sculling boats are set up for left over right hand rowing. Balance exercises are important in building the confidence of the athletes in the boat and teaching them how to react in difficult situations. The simplest is a safe position. The athletes sit at the finish, arms are straight, and the blades are flat on the water, perpendicular to the boat for maximum balance. The oar handles can be held by one or both hands. Rocking the boat is the next exercise. The athlete rocks the boat from side to side by lifting one hand up and lowering the opposite hand. From here we can progress to hands on the head. The athlete brings her knees up and secures the oar handles between the knees and body. The boat is balanced and the hands are free. Finally, when you're ready, you can stand up in the boat. With the blades flat on the water, the athlete stands up on the footplate, holding both oar handles in one hand. The first step in getting familiar with the oars and with the rowing motion is rowing with one hand. The athlete rows with one hand only, keeping the other blade flat on the water with the hand close to the thigh. Next comes turning around or spinning. The athlete rows one hand forward, one hand backwards. Rowing backwards can be done by using arms only or by using the full stroke when the athlete is more advanced. Stopping the boat is a very useful skill in emergency situations that require a sudden stopping of the boat. The athletes raise the hands, holding the skulls up to dig the square blades into the water. The simplest way to learn how to scull is to start from the finish of the stroke. Row by half of the boat using arms only. Stress correct posture and keep some pressure on the footboards. Now we add the back. The athlete pivots the upper body from the hips. She tries to keep her arms straight until she reaches vertical body position. Next we add the slide. In the beginning, add only quarter slide. Then add more slide, up to half slide. Make sure the body's pivoted forward before the beginning of the slide. Go to full slide once the boat has gotten relatively good at half slide. Here's an example of good sculling by one of the high school rowers. The workout is over and the boats are coming back to the dock. This can be a difficult task for the novice coxswains and for novice rowers. This boat has a good approach to the dock. The boat is slow, only two people are rowing, and most importantly, there was someone on the dock to help. 
This approach is a little too parallel to the dock. There was not enough of an angle, but they managed to get in safely. This is not a good approach. The boat is too perpendicular to the dock. Thanks to the people on the dock and the low speed, they got in without any damage to the boat. People of all ages start to row every year and teaching them proper grip, technique, and boat handling from the very beginning will increase their enjoyment of the sport. Develop a safe and fun way to work with the new team members and you will create lifelong rowers.